This is the Wellnergy Podcast. I'm Sarah Pickin-Brown, Integrated Movement Specialist, Wellness Coach of 20 years, and former pro athlete. Every week, we get down and dirty with all things fitness, nutrition, and mental health related, with an array of special guests who share their incredible stories, nuggets of advice, and answer your burning questions. So grab that drink, get comfy, and let's dive on in. We are moving through at a cracking pace with introducing you to all of our amazing experts and fitness pros who will be present in Wellnergy's September Festival. Now, the next guest that we have on today is no exception to this. She is, however, going to be available in uh, the fitness tent only and will be sharing her particular passion for jumping rope. Now, it seems like probably a very simple, probably kids related activity, but no, the adults are taking jump rope to a whole new level, particularly after the global pandemic forced most people to uh, take on a slightly different approach to their fitness and uh, to simplify how they were actually approaching their fitness and cardiovascular fitness in particular. Now, she's been a personal trainer for the last six years, and with her passion for jumping rope, she is working with clients to build up their stamina, their endurance, and their skills. And you can certainly book her for a PT session if you are wanting to increase your ability to jump rope at a much greater capacity. She has been quoted as saying, it improves your coordination, your agility, your cardiovascular fitness, and strength whilst having fun, and the best part is that it can be done anywhere. I'd like to welcome to the podcast our next special guest, Nicole Daniel. Hi, Nicole. I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. Now, tell us a little bit about your journey into fitness. Obviously, you've been personal training for a number of years, but how did you start training? And uh, tell us about this jump rope situation that you've got going on. So the the jump rope thing is very new, to be honest. I got into fitness at a very young age. I was actually a childhood national level swimmer. So from the ages of like 10, say 10 to I think to about 15 is when I kind of stopped. I uh, was a very dedicated swimmer. I was like a top top three level, uh, top three ranked swimmer in the country Um, and I was in the national squad and I spent a lot of time in the pool so I would get up at five go swim for two hours go to school then go back to the pool afterwards for two hours and that was my life for a long time so it installed a lot of discipline into me once I decided I didn't want to swim like that anymore I kind of got into athletics took a similar path of athletics and then eventually I kind of just got into the gym And I kind of decided to train as a personal trainer when I was about, I think I was probably 23. Um, And then it's gone from there. So I mainly train women now. Um, It was just a personal choice. I like working with women. I like um, motivating and kind of finding different ways to work around people's lives to fit fitness in and just make it accessible to everyone, but also not intimidating so okay if you've got five days a week and you want to train for an hour like across those five days that's great if you've got two days where you've got 20 minutes um and that's fine we work that into that um so that was how I kind of got into PT um I've always been a real fan of like high intensity training and I think from coming from a swimming background I've always been like a really quite into cardio and had quite intense levels of endurance to be honest with you which is a bit weird but um that so after that I decided to get into weight training a little bit I tried bodybuilding and quite got like I quite got into it I, I really wanted to compete in the bikini category but I never got around to doing that um and then it was only in October of last year really when I started to get properly into jump rope so I used to do double unders as part of like um high intensity circuits and stuff like that so I've always been able to double under which is a bit strange to be honest and just basic skip but then I started to discover other things that you could do as we went into our third lockdown in the UK I was like right I'm gonna 
I'm going to do a hundred day skipping challenge. I'm going to record it and like document it through my Instagram and just, just see what happens. I think because I had so much time and I spent so much time doing it because at this point I was obviously training my clients online. Um, I, I dedicated a lot of time to it and I got good very quickly. And then I started to get people more interested in it and pick up clients through wanting to learn how to jump rope and see the difference that it makes like mentally and physically and how you can even bring that to other types of training and, and improve other skills in your life basically. And then here we are now. Um, to be honest, I never stopped after the 100 days. So I think I'm probably on about 100 and... I reckon I'm about 120 now, consecutive days of skipping. <laughs> and how long How long would you would a session be? Is it something that you add in to a, a standard workout or is it a workout in and of itself? And how long would that be? Well, it used to be. So before I started really getting into it, I would I'd go to the gym, I'd do my weight training, and then I would do uh, 10 to 15 minutes, maybe three times a week just of jump rope then as obviously gyms closed I started to do it for a bit longer um I did at one point have to stop before I did my 100 days of skipping I had to stop for a little bit because I got really bad shin splints which is a really big thing for beginners um don't do too much at first basically um but now it can be anywhere from I literally might just pick up a jump rope for two minutes just <laughs> just so I can say that I've skipped that day um or I can I could spend up to two hours to be honest if I'm trying to learn something or if I'm trying to film something um yeah I could spend up to two hours so it depends Amazing. that is a huge range yeah now you also mentioned that there are psychological benefits to jumping rope can you just go through some, some of those for our listeners and what what somebody might be able to expect from taking on something like this Sure. So um, I think, first of all, with with jump rope or skipping, it depends where you are in the world, what you call it. Um, it's it gives you a focus. You have to be very present whilst you're doing it. Your mind can't wander because you'll just skip out or trip over the rope. You have to be there thinking about what you're doing. Your arms and your legs are doing something completely different. So you've really got to concentrate. So first and foremost, being present in the moment is always is always a really good thing for mindfulness isn't it I mean I'm not like I have done yoga and, and I try to meditate but I'm not fantastic at it I have to say um so <laughs> I can say from trying to do that we can we can liken those two things um but mentally I think the biggest change that that I found um, was that because you elevate your heart rate so quickly, I feel you get a boost of endorphins quite quickly from, from skipping. So I just find that if I was in a bad mood or I was having a bad day, you know, I could pick up a skipping rope and go for five minutes and I would genuinely feel so much happy, happier afterwards. I feel that getting that hit of endorphins is, is the best thing that you could really do for your mind. It's I mean, it's similar to like going out for a walk and getting a bit of fresh air and clearing your head. But it's to me, it was just like this intense bit of like good mood. The other thing was, um, and I, I often say this on my Instagram and I'll, I'll film videos and things where I'm just like dancing around and looking a bit silly. But you just put on good music, put on whatever you like to listen to and just lose yourself in it. Have a bit of a dance party with the rope. And how could you not feel better after doing that? Now, I know that there are, having been a, a coach and a, a personal trainer to women for a number of years myself, um, you have a variety of, of women that you probably work with. And there are women who have had children and the thought of jumping up and down with a rope probably terrifies <laughs> them. Um, what would be your suggestion to ladies who are in that position that really do want to give this a try but are perhaps a little concerned that maybe um, the body isn't quite supporting the jumping up and down as perhaps it once was able to? Well, I suppose in this case, uh, you need to build it up slowly. I mean, that's really what anyone should be doing anyway, but really slowly, incrementally bring it into your training. Um, but make sure you're doing lots of other things in your training as well. So 
the best thing with skipping is it really works every bit of your body. So you really do get a bit of an upper body workout, obviously a lower body workout it works your core as well. So before you start to really kind of try and go on um, an intense jump rope journey for, for argument's sake, work on your core strength. So doing like planks and, and other core exercises, also your pelvic floor muscles, obviously you need to work those as well. Um, I think you'd have to start with the less intense jumping. So just bringing in things like the, the basic jump, uh, the boxer step, and then maybe focusing on some of the fun stuff that's not so high intensity. So things like arm wraps, even crosses, because you're only doing a very small jump off the ground. It's going to be more when you're starting to get into your runs, high knees, double unders, you know, if you really want to go there, triple unders, things like that is going to become feeling a little bit more uh, nerve wracking, I suppose. So yeah, working on your core strength, working uh, on your pelvic floor muscles and um, just slowly bringing in the basic bounce, the boxer step. And then if you want to add on from there, add in some of the other things that make your sequences look really cool that are more low intensity, I'd say. Absolutely. So really it is about, like anything with with a fitness journey, it's about starting small and building up incrementally. Yeah. Time, not trying to do too much too soon. So that's really, really good advice. Now, you're going to be presenting at Wellmergy. What can people expect from the sessions that you're going to be taking them through? Because you've got, you've got a few things lined up, don't you? I do. So I'm really excited about this. Um, I'm going to be doing two sessions. So one of them is like a skipping fitness kind of workout where we're going to go through some skills and drills um, and a very basic footwork um, combination that we'll put together uh, and make it look like a sequence. This is aimed at your absolute beginners um, and kids as well. So it's going to be really fun. Um, in all honesty, some of the kids might be better at this because if you're used to doing things <laughs> yeah. like it is true because if you can do hopscotch, um, you, you're going to be able to do uh, definitely one of the sequences that I've planned. Um, if you can just jump on the spot, if you can run and just bring your knees up on the spot, a lot of these things, unfortunately, kids are probably better at. Um, so that's one of them and that's going to be a lot of fun. And then in the other one, uh, we could call it like a beginner to intermediate. But the idea is it's supposed to look a bit, um, I'll say a bit more interesting, like or visually stimulating to watch. And it's a bit of a more difficult sequence, but it's not going to be so hard that you can't get it. I basically picked skills which look pretty cool but they're not difficult to learn um, and we're going to put that all together as well and I will teach you it um, broken down bit by bit basically okay. and then we're going to learn to freestyle and that's always fun. Learning to freestyle I like it <laughs> definitely take away from the event and, and start to work on that. Now just moving away from the the jump rope skills or skipping skills for a moment and obviously movement and exercise has been a really important part of your life for a really long time did you come from a family that was very focused on athletics and 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 fitness or is this something that is a passion that's come just from yourself do you know what that's that's a really good question it's really funny because my family per se isn't actually that sporty uh like my mum's fit um Hopefully she, hopefully she doesn't kill me for that saying this she's really old school and really loves like aerobics so you know still she does aerobics like three times a week which is amazing um and my dad used to be uh, a runner so he used to do uh, 400 meters I believe and he used to play rugby and stuff like that but not like at a very high level so I've not come from a hugely sporty family I think when we were little my mum and dad kind of just tried to encourage us to get into different sports and to find things that we liked when I started swimming from a young age I got uh, like picked up by a coach that recognized uh, talent and kind of like just it, it propelled from there from a young age I, I swam a lot and I think because it never occurred to me that life would be any different apart from 
going to the pool every day to swim that just transferred for the rest of my life I can't resonate with not being fit because I have always been fit um to be honest but it was a passion that was installed in me from a young age and it's just gone gone from there really I just love to move I'm like a you know, I'm like in my 30s, but I'm like a hyperactive child. I just love to move and move my body and like just just celebrate what your body can do, you know? Actually, at any age, you have to be mindful of the limitations of your body and not doing too much too soon and just kind of enjoying each session as it comes, but also looking at the bigger picture of like, okay, well, if I want to be able to one day do this for 45 minutes, I have to start with two, three times a week at 10 minutes and then you build it up. But it's so true. Any Anyone at any age can pick pick it up, really. Give us a little bit of an insight into that because I know my experience with ropes, I'm, I'm very short and they're always too long. So that's the first thing that I've always had trouble with, uh, with getting a rope that was the right length. But then when I actually started doing CrossFit, the size of the rope and the material that the rope was made of changed significantly and it became very very thin and quite light and I have to say that doing double unders and getting them wrong caused some fairly severe injuries <laughs> there was often blood because the rope was so fine and the speed with which it was going was would really whip you so I have trauma response uh thoughts about double unders oh. and ropes <laughs> so what would you oh no what would be the best ropes for people to try? Because I've seen there's some really interesting ones out there these days that have all sorts of neon colours and they've got um, sectioned off beads almost in them so that they move differently. What would you suggest? So you're right. There is like a world of ropes out there. Um, it depends on your style of skipping. So obviously you mentioned CrossFit. So a typical CrossFit rope tends to be a very like thin, wiry one because they are supposed to be easier to uh, consecutive double, double under with. Um, and you can also go the complete other end of the spectrum. You can get weighted ropes, which are really great if all you want is like conditioning. And let me tell you, they are so hard. Like I would consider myself quite fit now, especially when it comes to jumping. But I, a, a weighted rope is like a whole different world, but they give you a great workout. Um, but the, the two best ropes for beginners, so the best one is arguably a beaded rope. So the beaded ropes, this was new to me until I really got into it. Um, they have like shatterproof uh, plastic beads on them and um, the beads themselves slow down the, the how quickly the rope moves. So it allows you to get your footwork better it allows you to learn different tricks and things more easily. Um, you can actually hear it when you're skipping. It's much, much easier and much slower. And they have a little bit of weight behind them as well. So you can get a good workout with those. And then the other one is a PVC rope, which is often called a uh, speed rope um, because obviously it moves much, much quicker. Um, I personally way prefer skipping with a pvc rope i think that's just because i like the speed um and it's it's just i don't know i find it more fun but if you're a beginner the best one to go for is a beaded rope and then if you want to add another rope to your collection then get a five millimeter pvc rope that's going to be the best one um both of those with short handles as well short <laughs> whole world yeah, yeah. Amazing. Good advice. Uh, is there anywhere where people can find you if they want to, you know, touch base with you about um, tips and coaching? Because you've just given some really, really sound advice there and certainly stuff that I was not aware of. Um, I'm sure that you have all sorts of knowledge. Um, where can they find you and where can they find some of these amazing ropes? So um, I'm very active on Instagram. I do, I will try and write back to anyone that uh, DMs me. So my Instagram is Nicole Danielle Fitness underscore, which I know that's a little bit of a mouthful, but yeah. <laughs> um, and then the ropes I use are dope ropes. So uh, you can, you can, they actually ship worldwide now. Um, and they're, yeah, absolutely amazing. So you can find them on dope ropes website. Amazing. And that Dope Ropes is, um, is UK based, isn't it? 
yeah it's a, it's a uk brand it's actually the the guy that runs it he's really lovely um but the ropes themselves are just amazing and on their website alone they have a lot of uh information about uh, which rope is good for what style of skipping you want to do and whether you're inside or outside and um, there's a lot of advice on there too so that's wonderful advice and i'm sure that um you know everybody who is interested can find you on instagram they can certainly find you at wellnergy both on our digital event and also in our september event where they can come and actually touch base with you and, and learn some new skills and and uh choreography for some fancy footwork. Nicole, it's been an absolute pleasure. Just one last thing, how many ropes do you actually own? I have at least 11. <laughs> <laughs> and is it growing? Is, is there more? It's growing, growing, yeah. It's growing. Well, I do have a favorite and any that are pink are always always a, a top a top three rope for me, but yeah. <laughs> so pink and a, and a growing collection, it's, it's all about the ropes, amazing. Nicole, it's been an absolute pleasure learning about you and your uh, journey through fitness and, and I'm sure that it will continue to expand as your yes I hope so thank you so much for having me lovely we'll look forward to seeing you soon take care thank you